Greetings, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Midweek Update here on Wrestling the Redbeard. These are the stories for the week of August 19th, 2015. Let's get to it. Number five story of the week this week is bad timing for apology. This story revolves around the supposed interaction that happened between China and Triple H at Rowdy Roddy Piper's funeral. The story originates from a couple of tweets that were uh, brought out by Sean Waltman, of course, who's better known as X-Pac to most people. In those tweets, Waltman said that China attempted to bum rush Triple H to issue an apology for some of the things that she said and done here in relation to the uh, relationship that she and Hunter had long, long ago. Uh, China herself has come out since then and said that the story that Dex Pock relates is not true, that they had an interaction of about 20 seconds and it was not during the funeral that took place as they were apparently leaving the grounds and whatnot. Regardless, uh, I think that there are always going to be a uh, time and a place for this type of interaction to happen. Seeing as how the things that she said have not been particularly gracious about Triple H, she you know, has accused him of a number of things, not the least of which was um, an assault, you might as well go ahead and say. Um, that was not the point or the time to try and interact with him. Um, you have to say that China has gotten to a bit of a, a lunatic fringe, to borrow Dean Ambrose uh, gimmick at this point in time. Uh, she's gotten to a point where it's no longer funny, it's now kind of sad. She, I know, is attempting to get back in the good graces of a lot of people, including the public at large. We'll have to see if this affects her. Uh, personally speaking, she's already in the loony bin as far as I'm concerned, and this is just one more um, show full of dirt that's putting her deeper into that category. Number four story of the week is Anarchy Wrestling for Sale. At this point in time, people don't seem to know quite what's happening with Anarchy. The uh, situation has come up that the promotion may be for sale. Uh, this stems from a article that was written by Larry Goodman, published at GeorgiaWrestlingHistory.com. Uh, it seems to be up in the air at this point in time as to whether or not the promotion is going to continue on with its current ownership. Uh, Anarchy changed hands about uh, less than a year ago, and it went from being owned by Franklin Dove to the current owner, Charles Anschutz, who is also the uh, owner of Southern Fried Championship Wrestling. And when he purchased the rights to Anarchy, he mentioned that the two promotions would be separated um, in terms of their operations and whatnot. Uh, it seems though that uh, Southern Fried is still getting a lot of attention. Anarchy seems to be falling a bit by the wayside. Um, there have been some, pro some comments made by Bill Barons and also Tom Simpson and others that have kind of led people to believe that uh, they're not happy with how things are happening or how things are breaking down at Anarchy. They were all at some point in time involved with that promotion in one shape or another. Um, the fact of the matter is that Anarchy is a very long-standing promotion in this part of the world. <clears throat> They've been involved in developing the careers of people like Gunnar, AJ Styles, um, Dash Wilder, who's currently in WWE Developmental. Um, a number of top stars who've come out of this part of the world have been in Anarchy's roster at one point or another. I uh, would really hate to see for it to go um, because there's a lot of history there. It would be very bad if that promotion did not continue operation. Um, so we'll have to see what goes on here. I know that they're having an event this weekend, Hostile Environment. It's one of their bigger shows of the year, and I expect some uh, news to come out of that. So we'll be paying close attention to that particular event and seeing what happens with the current ownership and where they could be in the future. Number three story of the week, Kevin Dunn thinks Owens is a fatty. Yes, this stems from some comments that were made a few weeks back on Raw. Uh, comments that were made by Randy Orton in regard to Kevin Owens' physique. Everybody knows that uh, Owens is not a traditional superstar in his look. He's got a belly, much like uh, most of the fans in the audience do. Makes him uh, something of an everyman. But uh, at any rate, <clears throat> Randy Orton made some comments in regard to the way he looks, and uh, these comments were attributed to Kevin Dunn. Kevin Dunn, if you're not aware, is an executive with WWE. He's a uh, person who's involved with the creative process therein, and he's been something of a target for a lot of people here recently because it's believed that he's not too big on a lot of the NXT call-ups that have been brought to the main roster. People like Bo Dallas, some of the Divas, um, and Kevin Owens apparently here is drawing his ire here most recently. People who are fans of Kevin Owens, I don't think have a problem with his physique. I don't think his physique is an issue, personally speaking, because if you watch his work rate, you watch his performances, it doesn't get in the way of it. He just happens to look a little bit different. And guess what? Historically speaking, different is not bad in terms of professional wrestling. 
it's a little bit of a differentiation, sure. He's not some chiseled Greek god, sure. Does he have to be? No, obviously not. He's getting over with the fans, he's connecting, and he's obviously got a niche audience there that's going to be standing behind him because Twitter lit up like a Christmas tree. Um, a lot of people were calling for Kevin Dunn's um, termination after it was found out that this apparently was something that he instigated. Um, Dunn did have his supporters as well. One of those was Vince Russo. Not sure that you want to have Russo as your cheerleader, but it happened. Uh, nevertheless, um, this is one of those things that uh, nothing will probably come of it other than just some hubbub and uproar online. Um, Dunn is a guy who's been there forever and he will likely be there until a total regime change happens and even then he'll be one of those guys that you totally have to shut out the door. Um, it just is what it is, folks. Be a star. Don't be a bully. Number two story of the week is that PWX has set the entrance for the inaugural X-16 tournament that will be taking place this coming September in Winston-Salem, North Carolina as part of their interaction with the Vape Mania event happening there. X-16 is a 16 participant tournament, much like the name would imply. They've got a lot of talent from around this part of the world and they've got some top drawn talent from the independent scene as a whole. The uh, total field, I'm not going to go through everybody on there, but the total field is quite enticing in terms of a fan. You've got everybody from Ricochet and Moose to Caleb Conley and the returning man scout Jake Manning who are going to be a part of the card. Um, from the standpoint of someone who's an onlooker and who's followed PWX for a long time, I find the idea of a tournament to be quite uh, quite enticing, as I mentioned there before. Uh, this is something that they've not done in the past. This is something that uh, is another similarity between them and promotions like PWG, for example, who do their own tournament uh, annually with the uh, BOLA events and whatnot. Um, I think this will be a interesting thing to see how it boils down because, like I mentioned, you've got guys like Ricochet, Moose, Gunner, and others who are top independent stars interacting with our local guys. Um, there are a couple people who were left off of the tournament list though that I think uh, probably should have been. Um, you've got some guys like David Starr, for example, who nobody really knows outside of uh, really knowledgeable independent fans. <clears throat> but then you've got talent who are local like uh, Elijah um, Evans IV and Jackson James who were left off of the um, tournament roster entirely. Um, so we'll have to see how that boils down. I think we've got uh, kind of an idea of what they're going for now with PWX in terms of the interaction between the uh, two sides that have developed there. If you're not a, a follower of PW Ponderings on Twitter and whatnot, you should go check them out because they'll keep you involved in this type of stuff. But uh, at the most recent PWX show, there was a, um, a return in Jake Manning who made his arrival and his presence known very much so in that uh, he's joined the revolt and is interacting with them and uh, going against the establishment there in PWX management who have been backed up by Country Jack <clears throat> and now also John Schuyler. So we'll have to pay attention to that and see where they're going forward. But it looks like it's going to be an interesting exchange between those two sides with the revolt and uh, Country Jack and whatnot. And uh, it looks to be a good tournament there as well. So if you're in this part of the world and can make arrangements, go ahead and make plans to be in Winston-Salem September 5th and 6th for X-16 from PWX. And the number one story of the week is the countdown to SummerSlam and NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. It's a big weekend in terms of wrestling, not only here locally, but also because of the fact there's a lot going on around SummerSlam. The TakeOver event, as we've mentioned here previously on the midweek update, is totally sold out. 13,000 fans will be there in attendance for that one. They'll see some great matches involving Kevin Owens, Finn Balor, uh, Jushin Lager, and Tyler Breeze, among others. And then also the SummerSlam card there happening the next night looks to be a top uh, show as well because you've got not only the World Heavyweight Championship and the United States Championship being on the line, but also a rematch from WrestleMania two years ago in Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker taking on one another. Uh, in addition to that, you've got a lot of uh, speculation in terms of who else could possibly pop up on that show. The big story here the past couple of days has been the, pop the possibility, I should say, of The Rock showing up on the show somewhere. Um, he's been somewhat rumored to be there, but then they've also confirmed that they'll be bringing in Stone Cold Steve Austin, Scott Hall, and a couple other legends. So uh, I don't think they'll be appearing on the show necessarily, but there's a possibility that The Rock could. Um, whether or not he will remains to be seen still. 
SummerSlam and the uh, shows that are happening around it should be a lot of fun to watch. This is going to be a big wrestling weekend for them. Uh, the TakeOver event, I think, is something I'm looking forward to just as much as the actual main SummerSlam card. Uh, Jushin Liger and Tyler Breeze, I think, are going to have a tremendous match. Um, Kevin Owens and Finn Balor will necessarily uh, or will absolutely be a top-notch match there. Uh, but then you've also got Kevin Owens and Cesaro who will be having a match the next night at SummerSlam. Uh, a lot of work put in by these guys for sure who are uh, top independent talents who have gone on to be part of WWE's roster. Um, the SummerSlam card, uh, a lot of interaction there in terms of guys who have been building to uh, various feuds. I know that we're going to have another uh, matchup between Sheamus and Randy Orton. You've got the Intercontinental title match. It was pushed back from Battleground between Miz, Ryback, and a big show happening there as well. The Divas will be involved. So it'll be a big show. It should be a lot of fun to watch. Looking forward to that one. And uh, looking forward to a lot of wrestling events happening this weekend here as well as there are nine total events happening in and around the Carolinas, including a couple over in Georgia and that part of the world as well. So let's go ahead and roll those posters here now and get you guys caught up on what's happening here in our part of the world. There you have it, our coverage of the local events that will be happening in this part of the world. If you are a promoter, wrestler, or in some way involved with a promotion, and you see this show but you don't see your poster on that particular segment, guess what? It's because we didn't know about it. We'd be glad to share your poster, though. That's what we're about here at Wrestle with Redbeard, getting the knowledge out about what's happening in this part of the world. If you would contact us with your information, either via YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, any of our social media pages, we'd be glad to share your information and your content either here on the program or also on the Facebook page. We've got a number of albums that are dedicated just to wrestling posters. Be glad to have your stuff out there. Just get it to us, and we'll be sharing it as soon as possible. That said, we appreciate you guys tuning in for another edition of the Middle Week Update here. If you enjoy the program, go ahead and click that like button that's down below my lovely face. And if you're really into the programming here that we have on the Rational Redbeard channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well. That way you'll be notified as to when we publish something new. We're trying to keep things as up to date as we can with matches, main show, and of course the midweek update here. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll be back next week with more on the midweek update.